So thank you very much, Evelyn, for inviting me to give this overview of the Global Health Network. And I'm going to talk about broadly about the, the Global Health Network and what we set out to do um, in terms of enabling evidence in places and regions of diseases where there's um, a great lack of data. And a large part of what we do is around capacity development. And obviously, one of our newest collective in this is Ready, which we're very proud to be involved with. So I shall explain how that works um, alongside the rest of the global health network activities. So we all are aware how much the sharing phenomena is changing the way we all work, whether it's booking our holidays or um, you know trying to find out how to fix a car. But it's but it. But the, the world is using the sharing phenomena to make you know, really bold and massive step forwards. So if you take the finance industry, the environmental sciences and climate, space technology, they've all worked out that we'll get to wherever we're going faster if we share knowledge and information. And those are two different things, knowledge and information, we'll come back to another time. But it's all around um, finding really good ways to do things in the most efficient way possible and then telling other groups about it. And this is requiring what's called a community of practice. And a community of practice is a group of experts who share the same challenge and the same problems. And they have found that if they work together in the community of practice, then they all get there faster. And by doing so, it, it, it doesn't um, create competition and um, a financial or a commercial disincentive, but actually makes them get to wherever they're heading um, in a better way. And so what we're trying to do with the Global Health Network is by this sharing phenomena and community of practice to global health. And um, we believe we're being um, fairly successful in that, as I'm going to show you. And this is also completely novel because there is a perception that scientists don't share, but we're showing that, in fact, they are and you can make um, everything um, faster and better if you do share. <clears throat> so... Clinical research capacity development in the past has largely focused on a single disease or a single protocol, um, usually around um, product development. Um, I've been very involved in vaccine research in the past, in drug development, and capacity development bolted in within that into, with a particular study. And that was great for getting that trial completed, but it's not very good for the lasting research capacity. In 2013, the WHO said, unless low-income countries become the generators of the recipients of data, we're never going to make big changes in um, the health outcomes of these countries. And the reason we're in the situation we're in with things like Ebola and Zika was that there was very limited research capacity in those places, and so it was impossible to mount a research response. Now, we know, and I've been working in clinical research for um, far too many years, well over two decades, and we know that the problems, and we've been measuring this, I've got PhD students looking at this, we've been measuring this for years. We know that the things that hold up to the research or make it difficult are the same. And I've done this at thousands of workshops now, and you can't ever really pinpoint something that's down to a particular disease or, or study. And the things that hold up research are the same. And if we then shared how we did things, it would make things um, much, much faster, but it also raises standards and creates standardization. And, and this is what I'm going to come back to um, in a minute, because this is what we need to do in order to, to make better progress than we're doing. So the Global Health Network has evolved with this whole um, philosophy behind it. And what it is now is a science park. And there's two sides of the science park. There are 32 different member areas, and these are 32 different communities of practice where they're using the digital technology to really work with a proper functioning network. They share protocols, they develop new documents, they uh, talk to each other. Um, this this Omnijoin platform is speaking on now so that you use the Global Health Network to enable these sorts of conversations. It's all around knowledge sharing and dissemination. And that's just one side of it. And you can see some familiar groups within this slide I've shown you here. Um, Asaric is on here, Ergo, um, the new Ready Network. And this is where people can operate on this platform and they can, um, they can make their collaboration network all the more um, impactful by having their platform on here so that they can share. We've had over a million hits now, and um, it's the dark taking use is phenomenal. So this is two sides to the Global Health Network. The first being is online science park, where the groups can consortium and have their own spaces. And then the second part is providing capacity development and resources for people who come and use this area. 
So people who come and use the Global Health Network are all the people who work in consortia and the leaders and the research leaders involved with those. But then the other side of this, the people who are really trying to access our frontline healthcare workers, the research staff, the lab staff, the clinicians, the nurses, who we need to train and engage in the regions in order that they can undertake research. So the other side of the uh, Global Health Network is um, the capacity development side. And so I'm just going to take you through what we have available in the Global Health Network. So the flagship really is our training centre. And we have seminars like we did, we're doing today where we use this technology. We've got some online learning we, and we have our regional faculties and we have uh, numerous other things that come up um, as people talk about them and, and, and decide to set up new initiatives and I'm going to take you through some of those. Without doubt, our short courses have been um, just beyond what we could have ever imagined in terms of success. Um, we, all of these have been put out with, um, with our uh, partners that we work with. And so they're all high quality, they all come from trusted, um, very uh, well-renowned partners like the WHO, the NDI, um, the Nuffield Council of Bioethics, just to name a few. And what we wanted to do in the original um, idea for this was to give all the courses that you would possibly need um, if you wanted to, if you're an independent researcher in a low-income country and you wanted to set up your own study. And so that was how we started this. And then we've ended up doing specialist topics as well that people have come and asked us to do. So we have a huge range. I haven't got time to go through now. You can easily find them on the, on the site. The basic how-to skills training courses so people can lead and run their own studies. And then the more uh, technical courses that uh, might be required to support particular areas of work. And as I say, all of these uh, have been developed in partnerships with our collaborators. So the success has been overwhelming, really. Um, the graph is a bit out of date, but the numbers are fine. We've had over 250,000 modules taken. Most of these have been in um, the developing countries that we work with, so largely Africa, Latin America, India. We do a huge amount of work translating the content and these materials. And um, these are some of the partners that we, you, we work with. So you can see the depth of um, the credibility of these courses. And we feel we've only just scratched the surface, really, and there's a huge amount more that we can do with these. Um, so these are all embedded with one um, particular area on the platform, which is called Global Health Trials. And this is really how the Global Health Network started. So the, this area on the whole platform is about providing people with everything they need to set up with studies. Um, and so you can, as well as finding all the e-learning courses, we've had thousands of template protocols, SOPs, templates for things like GCP files. We've got um, an application called Site Finder, which is one of the triggers to our first gate funding um, grant, which is like a dating site technology. And here, um, people who, who want to find new sites for their studies can access a whole list of research sites all over the world and see what they've done before and what their skills are. We've got um, a professional development scheme, which I'm going to come back to. And the, the point really is to have sort of one-stop shop, really, for research capacity. And that might be aimed at particular groups who are, say, working in TB or Zika or app disease outbreaks, or it could be um, simply research nurses who are working in a certain area of the world who want to access some of these resources to set up their study. And we know that we have people who just come on and they download a consent form template, for example, or they write on one of the blogs, I'm setting up a community advisory board, um, please can somebody help me, and they will get a response because the uptake is so high. The other side to this, um, which we're growing uh, very rapidly, and this is where the Ready Network comes in, which I'm going to explain more about at the moment, is we have what we call regional faculties, and these have been tremendously successful. And the online resources and doing this face-to-face -face work in the regions is just so impactful because it, it gets people in front of screens and helps them learn, but it also helps them introduce each other. And the idea of these regional faculties is it's groups of people in any one region who get together to support each other in running good studies. And the point is, like as I said at the beginning, it is not disease specific. This is about capacity doing clinical research networks who will support each other. And say so they might be in, um, in Lagos or in, or in Nigeria, I mean, <laughs> in Nairobi, and it will just be a facility for clinical research nurses to get together, lab staff, 
people to come along and say, what's difficult in our region for running studies so they can work with their regulators and their ethics committees and they can have these fantastically successful local networks to help make research easier and more accessible in their region. So some of the things that these um, regional networks do, and we really started this in Africa, and I'm really pleased that John's on the line here for you because this largely came out of our work with the Networks of Excellence, but it's grown beyond and around that. And, and, and again, the point is that it's not disease-specific. It's not just limited to any particular sites. And we welcome um, academic groups, CROs, charities, you know, it, it, you know, doing research, hospitals, and that's the point. There's so many different people who are engaged in research and they should be sharing between them. And so there's all sorts of activities they take on on the ground to support each other. Um, I haven't really got time to get into them now. There's lots more information on the website and, and, and um, we can um, just discuss this more in a second, but there's a, a huge range of, um, of activities that are going on and they're all led by these amazing people in the, in the region that just do this on their own um, initiative with our support. I would like to mention the professional membership scheme that we have and we've been working with WHO TDR on this and we've generated a core competency framework for researchers that is a WHO framework now because we did it through TDR funding and it's, and it's now been reported on by TDR and it's a formalised framework for measuring uh, research skills and capacity. And we, we're embedding this into the professional membership scheme and this enables us to track careers, measure capacity development, which has really been difficult in the past, and track individuals, sites and consortia as they grow their ability to undertake new research studies. And, and this provides us with um, a scheme to support individuals and the sites to track their careers, record their, um, their vocational skills that they're learning and training that they do, but it also enables us to measure how they have grown in those skills. And if, if you have a look on the website, you can find this very easily. And it's an incredibly powerful resource that um, allows us to really support the individuals, but also as, as groups to, to measure impact. So the overall success of the Global Health Network, we now have 37 of these communities of practice, these specialised areas that are used as a science park, and they are sharing knowledge and, and tools and resources every day. We've had over a million um, visits, but that's turned over 100,000 memberships, and you only have to join if you actually do something on the platform, so it's a really high turnover. And thousands and thousands of research documents have been downloaded and used, so to do please have a browse and look at all the different sources we have on there. So I obviously need to talk about Ready Today, which is our um, capacity development network we're setting up around the three EU-funded secret consortia. So this is... Um, our mechanism for working across the all three consortia that have been funded by the EU to support research um, based on the Zika outbreak, but we're looking forward and beyond this. So our philosophy here is that unless you equip regions with an uh, inbuilt, innate ability to conduct research, it's not possible to respond to an outbreak and gather the data. And so what we're aiming to do with READY is to work with experienced sites and less experienced sites across Latin America and the Caribbean and help them support each other to learn how to do research, get involved, and meanwhile, we're supporting the actual studies that are going on with the CQ work um, by uh, training the sites, giving them all their GCP certificates, supporting the laboratories, and uh, sharing protocols, site monitoring, and a whole raft of things that will make sure that the data captured within the Zika studies is excellent and ready for sharing, but also that we leave this embedded capacity in the network that can go well beyond Zika and establish a truly functioning long-term um, network to support the growth and capacity in the regions. So there's a list of things that we're doing to get this underway, and it will be around uh, lots of different training activities, putting these regional capacity um, activities in place that we've learned how to do so well in Africa, and the whole idea is to reduce the bottlenecks, speed up research, and help people get um, really good quality data in um, for these Zika studies and beyond. Just a couple of things that are also available um, on the Global Health Network, which might be helpful for um, some of the things we're going to talk about with um, the uh, having these uh, clinical trial and clinical research networks. 
A really useful tool we have on the Global Health Network is our process map. And we put this together to guide people in the process of setting up a new study. And if you click, click on any of the steps, it points you to all the resources and training, documents, templates that we have available on the whole platform. And so it's a phenomenal resource for people setting up new studies and it guides them in making sure they've thought about every single step that's needed in the, or on the way. And it's also helped us organise the vast amount of information we now have on this on our platform so that this is an easy way for people to find things very quickly. And this has been phenomenal um, and we really have lots of excellent feedback about it. But what it's also enabled us to do now is to think about research methodology and we want to turn this process map into a research methodology tool and generate an empty version that we can use to actually track studies as they're set up and gather the metrics on them and the issues so that we can really pinpoint where the true problems and bottlenecks arise. And I would be really interested in talking to this group about that work more because we want to apply that to all sorts of different settings and I think there's a huge potential in this. And just to show you another application for this uh, process map, the Gates Foundation that was so impressed with the process map of research, they asked us to adapt this and put together a, um, a drug development process map that can do exactly the same thing for their grantees in terms of guiding every step of the process. So we've now um, got this uh, new um, application that's just about to be launched and it's to guide um, people working in public-private partnerships and setting up new products in um, giving them access to tools and resources every single step of the way. And again, using this community of practice idea to make sure that we're sharing in between the different product development partnerships that we work with the Gates Foundation. So it could be malaria, HIV, TB, outbreaks, but again, getting people to share what works and what doesn't work so that the process can be streamlined and sped up. So I hope I've given you a very rapid overview on the Global Health Network and our work in capacity development. We do feel that we are really making an impact in persuading scientists to share, and that it is making an impact in terms of enabling research to be generated where it has been in the past. And so we've just got our, another five years funding from the Gates Foundation for the Open Platform. We're just setting off um, with our incredibly exciting work with the Ready Network, and we just feel we're poised here to just really take the Health Network to see what the potential it could be. And it's great to work with you all in these networks because we hope we really fit in well to these, um, these wide-reaching plans we all have. And I'm really interested to discuss um, whether we can use any of this technology and approaches to, um, to help all these networks that we're working with, with the, um, this consortium we set up through um, Evelyn's team. Thank you. Thanks so much, uh, Trudy. Very interesting.